<laughs> Yo, what's up? It's DNA for sure, and this video is breaking down the Ten Crack Commandments by Notorious B.I.G. Since his death date just passed, I believe it was 18 years ago. Um, rules to this shit, I wrote me a manual. Number one, rule number eight, uno. Never let no one know how much dough you hold because you know the cheddar breed jealousy. Especially if that man fucked up, get your ass stuck up. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, that's just normal street smarts. You know, you don't let people know that when you're about to re-up, which a lot of, like every drug dealer that I've ever interacted with or had to deal with or make transitions with, even my friends especially, is telling me that, yo, I'm on my way to re-up, or I just read up or I just dropped off the fucking stash, or I got, like, fucking $50,000 in the trunk right now, I can't even talk, blah, blah, blah. Um, people just say that uh, really casually. You know, I never really told anybody that I was going to re-up. I did, however, take a couple people with me sometimes because the area that I had to go to and things like that. But don't tell people when you're about to re-up or how much money you have. Even if you're not drug dealing, you know, don't. I just got paid. You know, a nigga just got paid. I got you, bro. I got you. Don't do that. You know, telling people, even especially like my roommate was a crackhead. And he was always asking me like the size of my checks when he needed to borrow money. And I'm like, bro, um, switch the subject on his ass. Number two. Let, never let them know your next move. Don't you know how bad boy? Don't you know bad boys move in silence and violence? Take it from your highness. I done squeeze mad clips at these cats for their bricks and chips. Um, that's you know just uh, an extension of the first rule. Don't let people know that you're about to go do something or you're. I, I didn't even tell people when I was going to my house or coming from my house or about to go to the store. Like I was just. Where you at? I'm in the hood or whatever the fuck I would say. I'm on the street right now. I'm fucking over here by wherever. Just give them a general area. Or like not even that. Just more like the first rule. Not letting people know what you're going to do or your mind's at. <clears throat> your location. Things like that. Number three, never trust nobody. Your mom's just set that ass up. Properly gassed up. Hoodied and masked up. For the fast buck, she be laying in the bushes to light that ass up. Never trust nobody. I mean, that's that's definitely a big factor. You know, when you put trust in certain people for certain things, you you become vulnerable, and there will be people who will. You know, like when I was in high school, one of my friends is a square. You know, he was an athlete. He was like, yeah, if you don't uh, stop selling weed, I'm going to tell your mom that you're selling weed or whatever the fuck. Um, that was probably not the case for Biggie Smalls in this situation. But, you know, knowledge is power. Information is, is a weapon. Number four, never get high on your own supply. If you smoke weed, don't sell weed. If you smoke crack, don't sell crack. If you do cocaine, don't sell cocaine. Sell things that you don't do. And if you do those, like for me, I was selling weed and I smoked a lot of weed, but I was selling a lot of mid at one time. I was only doing dubs. But when I would re-up, I would also go get an eighth or get a couple grams and not take any personal out of the pack that I was selling. So I would get my two, three ounces, quarter pound, and then I would go to a different weed man a couple miles away and get some kush or some shit and just roll up four blunts off rip and just smoke the kush and just sell my dubs all day. That's how I did it so I wouldn't touch that money even though I was probably spending I wasn't losing money by doing that because I had a job the job was the job was to survive and to pay for the loud and the cush I mean in the that was just for 
you know, gas and food and shit and liquor. Number five, never sell no crack where you rest at. I don't care if they want to ounce, tell them bounce. I, only the people who I fucked with actually came to my house to make transactions, but then they kicked it for a couple of hours or rode with me all day. I never, ever, ever told anybody to come to my house, ever, ever. Um, I always went to them, even if they're in the other complex, even if it, they were in the same complex, they'll be like, yeah, I'm on my way. No, let me come bring it to you. Or I would fucking um, go somewhere where I would see them walking towards my house before they would get there and just make a little bird call, turn their head, and then meet me in the little door or a different building. Never, never eat where you shit. Shit where you eat. Learn from animals. Animals don't fucking take shits next to their water bowls and stuff like that. Keep that shit separate. Um, number six, that goddamn credit debt. If you think a pack a crackhead uh, paying you back, shit, forget it. Um, a lot of the times I didn't do fronts. Everybody usually paid me back, and if it wasn't. It was one of the closer homies that I knew would put $5 on some gas or some shit like that or, you know, bring a bottle one day. But no, never do fronts. Like, when people ask me if I could front them something, I would just pretend like I didn't hear them or I didn't hear it. They usually have the money, but they just want to get, you know, a pack of cigarettes or a bottle or, or something else. Um... That's why a lot of my clients were not females, because females want shit free, and they want fronts all the time. Not all females, but num uh, number seven, this rule is so underrated. Keep your family and business completely separated. Money and blood, like, don't mix like two dicks and no bitch. Find yourself some serious shit. Gross. Yeah, I never... When I did have teams and squads and shit like that and clicks, I never involved my family for the most part. I don't think I have. Um, none of my family was really trustworthy. As far as getting it from them, that was another thing. But clicking up or riding around with my cousin while I sell mid and he sells pills or some shit, I never did that with family. Why? It's because, you know, emotions and business are not something that should be mixed. And when you involve your family, you know, there's if, if, if they get caught, it's so easy for you to be linked to them forever, you know. Um, that's just one thing. But it's the, the emotional thing, you know, if anything happens, you don't want to have to whack one of your family members or not talk to them for a very long time just because of money shit. That's just not, that's not even just the drug dealing business, any business. Um, money and emotions, using your emotions to make business decisions is not good. Number eight, never keep no weight on you. Them cats that squeeze your guns can hold drums too. I'm pretty sure that's not the lyrics. Um, but I didn't, I, when I would deliver, I would probably, I wouldn't bring like the whole ounce. People do that. People ride around with the whole ounce when they get there, take it out, ask you if it's okay, or they have a couple extra bags, but there's not too many people riding around with ounces and pounds and shit, trying to just drop off a dub. Even when I did have to go right across the street. I would drop it off first, especially, you know, if you just feel like smoking a blunt and you have a fucking half in the car, it's not going to work. Nine should have been number one for me. If you ain't getting back, stay the fucking police. Some niggas think you snitching and they ain't trying to listen. They be sitting in your kitchen waiting to start hitting. I mean, that's just a given. It's no snitching. Snitching is... Whatever you do, like, people can get information on your statements and things like that very easily, number one. Number two, like, don't even just, you can say, I don't answer questions, I don't like to answer questions, 
Um, I'm not at liberty to discuss that, or I just, I don't want to be seen talking to you. Get the fuck away from me. Make a scene if you have to, but it's just something that is a lot of the times unavoidable, where they will do it just to start some shit, or pull you over when you got three people. I hated this shit. Pull you over when you got people in your car. You don't remember me? I know you. How you been, buddy? Like, bro. Or they'll be talking to you like they really are involved in your fucking life. And the shit causes problems. Of course. They know what the fuck they're doing. But it's just um, important just to keep that interaction as made positive and brief as possible and let and watch who watch your environment to see who saw you talking to the police if anything happens like that number 10 a strong word called consignment strictly for live men not for freshmen if you ain't got the clientele stay hell no because they going with their money range lead house no um I did actually get fronted two ounces, and I got locked up. Right? Did I get locked up? I made his money back. Mm, that was the summertime. I didn't get locked up in the summertime. I made his money back. Oh, he got locked up, and I kept re up because he was dry. I sold his two ounces. I think he wanted, like, 75 or some shit. Um... I sold that two ounces in like three days. When he got locked up, he got jumped by some kings and got locked up. One of my plugs. And before that, actually, I had been trying to re-up for like two days. And I had to go all the way to the south side to get some better shit for about $25 more. Um, but I kept re up and spending his money. And he was getting mad and, you know, stuff like that. But he ended up getting locked up. And for about a month. But I never, I see, I never got fronted. Because I don't like people being able to have me by the balls and constantly calling me for their money. And, you know, having to pay people for me doing their job that they can do themselves, basically. Somebody fronts me a fucking ounce and wants me to bring them back fucking $50 or whatever the fuck the case is. I never liked doing that. That's never been my thing. I probably only got fronted like twice in my life from a drug dealer for, you know, for work. I've gotten fronted dubs and shit like that and, you know, just little shit. But not ounces at a time, you know, actual work. But anyways... He goes on to say that if you don't follow these rules, you're going to be dead or in jail or your girl's going to snitch on you because she sniffed a whole half a cake and she sucks a good dick and she can make steaks and things like that. But, you know, it's not that it's not that open and shut. Ten Crack Commandments is not the end all be all to not be in debt or in jail, but 